Jnanati Mirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militang Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sharashate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunnavadi Paschata Deshotarine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Bhashadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, <laughs> thank you all very much for giving us this opportunity to come here and remind everyone about this very important aspect of human civilization. First of all, I want to thank Krishna Purushottam Prabhu for organizing this wonderful and very, very important convention and for inviting me to this program and giving me this opportunity to speak here today. I also want to express, along with the importance of this project, the involvement of Bhakti Raghav Maharaj in this project. Because I know Bhakti Raghav Maharaj from the very beginning of my involvement in ISKCON. And I had seen how committed and how tenacious he is when he gets involved in something. Those early days in Mayapur, Bhakti Raghav Maharaj started a project which actually became worldwide involvement that is the Nam Hat project. It was started by him. <clears throat> in a very simple way, in a very humble way, he used to go from village to village. There were no transport and he used to often go there by bullock carts <laughs> or bicycles and so that shows when he commits himself to something how he really it gets involved to its fulfillment. Also this morning a godbrother of mine whom, who saw Bhakti Raghav Maharaj for the first time 
he asked me what happened to his leg. At that time I could not respond to him, answer him, because we are quite busy with our Go Puja here, worshipping the cow. But I'll tell you, to, I thought it's important that I tell all of you. In Mayapur, once the dacoits attacked our temple. And Bhakti Raghav Maharaj charged towards them without caring how many of them were there or what kind of support he had. But he just rushed into it. And those dacoits, the dacoits hurled a bomb. And that actually caused him to lose his leg. So that shows these two incidents I am confident is good enough to make you recognize what kind of a personality he is. <clears throat> Cow protection is a very, very important aspect of our movement because we want to establish the Vedic culture in this world. Srila Prabhupada couldn't do very much about establishing this aspect of Vedic culture that is Go Brahmana Hitayacha. The basic foundation of Vedic culture is Go that is cow, brahmana, the intelligent class of people, to support them, to benefit them, in order to establish proper human culture in this world, in order to establish proper spiritual culture in this world. Now, ISKCON has become considerably established. We have more than 600 temples all over the world today. And so, personally, I feel it is very important that we now take up this mission of cow protection and agriculture. Last year, I was the chairman of the, our governing body and last year we also appointed a new Minister of Cow Protection and Agriculture. Previously, <coughs> Balabhadra Prabhu used to be the Minister for Cow Protection and Agriculture who is sitting here now. and. After Balabhadra Prabhu retired, we did not really have a proper person to take care of that ministry. We were searching, we considered different individuals, but finally we found somebody, a devotee from Brazil, who spent considerable of time, considerable amount of time in the United States and also in India. And we found that he was very committed to his mission. And that's why I felt that he needs a lot of support and I assured him that I would give him that support that he needs. And that's how I actively got involved in cow protection culture since last year. And we had a meeting in our farm community, as Bhakti Raghav Maharaj mentioned, the first 
farm community that Srila Prabhupada established, New Vrindavan, and few of our leading individuals who are involved in this cow protection culture. Uh, we had a meeting and we became aware of one major problem that cow protection faces. And that culture, that, that problem is, especially in cold countries like North America and Europe, um, when the cows become dry, we have to maintain them. A cow gives milk for about, say, 8 to 10 years, but a cow lives for about 18 to 20 years. So, <clears throat> when she stops giving milk, that means when she practically becomes unproductive, then you have to maintain them. And it becomes a very difficult job. Because especially in winter, you have to keep the cows in the barn and you have to buy the fodder for them. And as a result of that, uh, we became kind of restrained to properly take care of this mission of cow culture, cow protection, cultivation of cows. And, and that is why the farmers sell their cows when they become dry. Because they can't maintain them, so they just sell them. We also had a talk with few farmers, and especially one of them actually told us that, look, when we are telling him, the cow is giving you milk for so many years, and she's hardly taking anything from you, so why do you send them to the slaughterhouse? Can't you just maintain them? And his response was, actually all of them responded the same way, that we can't, because it becomes too expensive. And, and this one farmer actually told, told us that my heart actually aches when I sell these cows. Because over a period of time we do develop a relationship with them. And to send them to slaughterhouse is something like sending someone who is very close to you to be slaughtered. But you can't help it. And so that actually made me think that why don't we, especially for our own sake, to cultivate the cows and cow culture, why don't we have a large piece of land in southern part of the United States where the, where the weather is quite nice, where the weather is quite conducive and the winter is not so severe, why don't you get a large piece of land and we can get our cows, dry cows, to be brought to those places and they can graze. Actually, the, they don't need very much. Even the milking cows also don't need very much. Like, just some grass is good enough for them and maybe some medical support and other stuff and things like that. And with that idea in my mind, I actually told some of our close associates to look for some large piece of land. And within a very short time, we got to, we got to know quite a few, few possibilities. But then I came across a property in Florida, near Orlando. It's about one hour's drive from Orlando. Uh, 116 acres of land, which used to be a Christian youth retreat center. 
and they want to sell they wanted to sell that property because they're moving from this place to another place and so when i saw the place i became very attracted because of the inbuilt facilities that were already there like accommodation facilities and kitchen and various other facilities were already there you can well imagine it was a retreat center so all kinds of facilities were there so we acquired that property and the idea is to develop a facility for dry cows to come to be brought in there and take care of them and so that is how i got involved quite actively in this mission and also we are negotiating with another property in louisiana uh, about 600 acres of land which can be also used for protecting the cows the mission here is actually try to stop the cows from be sent to the slaughterhouses and support our own farm communities to go ahead full pelt in this cow protection and uh, goshala mm, culture mm, without any hesitation that if we keep on multiply the cows it will be they will become a burden so these are the various ways that we are trying to promote this cow culture and at the same time when i'm also very much aware how bhakti raghav maharaj is becoming mm, very actively involved and uh, a few other devotees also are becoming very sincerely involved in this project and so i feel very hopeful about this endeavor now from the video that has been presented at the outset at the beginning of this program very clearly shows the importance of spiritual life and the role of cows in that endeavor without cows spiritual culture cannot be established the importance of cows is not only because the cows give milk and other such benefits but the real importance of cows lies in the fact that in the topmost region of the spiritual world which is known as golok vrindavan is a golok is a world of cows the topmost region of the spiritual world is the world of cows a planet of cows there the inhabitants of that planet of that region are gopas meaning those who maintain the cows and the supreme personality of godhead who is the predominating moiety of that region is gopal who maintains the cows he is govinda who gives pleasure to the cows so we can see that the spiritual domain spiritual world has different regions actually in generally 
the spiritual world is known as Vaikuntha. But beyond Vaikuntha is Vrindavan. And in Vrindavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is engaged in tending cows. That's what he does with his associates who are assisting him in this mission. Why the Supreme Personality of Godhead is so much involved with cows? Obviously, they are very dear to him. Now let us consider the Supreme Personality of Godhead very mercifully has given his own form to the human beings. Man has been created according to the image of God. This statement is from Bible is in perfect sync in perfect sync in perfect harmony with the Vedic understanding. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is not four-handed in his original form, not two-handed or thousand-handed, but two-armed. This two-armed form of the Lord is his or original form which is mm, considered uh, to be his Swarupa. And he has given this form to the human beings. In that respect, we can also consider in Vaikuntha, mm, the Supreme Personality of Godhead as Narayan is four-armed. And that form has been given to the devas in the heavenly planets. Higher than the earth planet is the heavenly planet. And the residents of the heavenly planet, the devtas, the devas, are four-armed. Whereas in the earth planet, the human beings are two-armed. And this form is identical to the form of the original form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And while he gave, endowed this, bestowed this mercy to the human beings, he has sent the cows to this planet to have a perfect harmony between each other and that is the secret of the ultimate prosperity. In a way we can see <clears throat> that the cows are providing us the milk. What does milk do? In that respect we can consider that Meat actually benefits or builds muscles. Meat builds muscles. But milk builds brains, nourishes the brain. Milk also nourishes the bones. The bones and brain who are actually, these two factors are most important for the human structure. And this support is coming from cow's milk. When we take milk or when we depend on cow's milk, the brain substance gets nourished. 
milk cows make milk milk nourishes brain milk makes good brain good brain makes the most intelligent class of people in the human society most intelligent class of people make the human society god conscious and god consciousness makes man achieve the perfection of his existence the ultimate perfection of human beings lies in his development of spiritual culture that means establishing his loving relationship with the supreme personality of godhead so this way we can see the link uh, between the milk and the perfection or the cow and the perfection of human existence vaisheshika prabhu and bhakti raghav maharaj also in their presentation made this point also very clear from another perspective like vaisheshika prabhu pointed out that jag annad bhavanti bhutani parjannad anna sambhava jagyad bhavati parjanya jagya karma samudbhava annad bhavanti bhutani the living entities survive by eating food annya the food is generated due to rain the rain is caused by yagya spiritual offering to the supreme personality of godhead and therefore the human beings must be involved in performing sacrifices yagya bhakti raghav maharaj also gave a very beautiful analogy in the similar line uh, due to rain grass grows human beings don't have any need for grass as such but the cows eat the grass and they convert this grass this also i'm sorry this also was the presentation of vaisheshika prabhu that to the cows grass is like nectar and then they transform grass into the real nectar which is milk milk is actually nectar the sanskrit word for nectar is amrit amrit means the substance that defies death of course in this in this material nature death cannot be completely defied but death can be uh, death can be thwarted death can be countervailed by taking milk that means milk gives longevity and healthy life in that respect there is a, a nice anecdote with akbar and virbal the great mughal empire the great mughal emperor akbar had a very very wise and witty minister birbal so once akbar asked birbal birbal was the best milk birbal said buffalo milk akbar was surprised buffalo milk no i was under the impression that the cow's milk is the best birbal said that's not milk that's nectar <laughs> 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 
so this is how uh, the <coughs> cow cow's milk benefits us and i am very very happy that such a wonderful arrangement has been made to progress towards that ultimate perfection of human society and i'll end with a a portion of a poetry that i came across recently written by an english lady from La from lester it's re it reads in unmarked slaughterhouses the madness continues peaceful tender cow why cut her throat haul her in a trailer stun restrain shoot dismember her rip off her skin she eats only grass useless to humans gives milk yogurt butter curd her cow pats are black gold in lucius peaceful pastures cows chew the cud floating through buttercups daisies fragrant meadow sweet murmuring lowing cuddling up serene under clear blue sky greedy with her own horn snaffling up the carrots violet sweet and shy hiding in a corner dharma forthright and fearless the leader this is our family fed by a mother taught by a mother loved by a mother thank you all very much